Now what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to teach you one more absolutely essential uh, skill that will enable you to become a great meditator. It's called strong determination. So I was introduced to strong determination as a practice by uh, Shinzen Young. I was at a meditation retreat and it was a seven day meditation retreat. We were in uh, the sixth day of the retreat and I don't know, have any of you guys been on a meditation retreat where you know, you're, you're sitting on a meditation cushion for eight to 12 hours a day and, and during the middle, especially at Shinzen's retreats, you do this thing called Yaza, which is a Zen practice where you meditate all night long too. And I don't mean you meditate you stay in a meditation posture the whole night, but you'll start it, you meditate all day and, and then there'll be a nine o'clock teaching and then 10 o'clock you start sitting and the first sit's 45 minutes, then you get 15 minutes, then it's an hour, then you, and, and you, you keep meditating, but you meditate the whole bloody night. And so the, so the whole day you probably sat on a cushion for 18 hours or more. And I got to tell you, after you do something like that, your ass hurts. <laughs> and, and, and so does your knees. I mean, you are like, oh. And so, and so you're working with a lot of pain and discomfort, voice in head, discouragement. You're working with your stuff. So this is the last day of the retreat. It's the last morning and we're feeling like, okay, finally, we're almost out of here. And uh, just before lunch, and Shinzen's like, you know, you guys have been great. This has really been a solid group. Uh, but I, I noticed something that sometimes when we're sitting that, you know, some of you are like scratching and moving around and swallowing. And as soon as he started talking about that, I started thinking immediately, oh my God, he's talking about me because I'm like Mr. Teacher's pet. I'm sitting in the front row and I'm the guy that's going like this. <laughs> you know? And, and so I'm like, loser. And so then he's going, you know, let me tell you a story about some amazing monks that live today. They're called marathon monks. And it is true, you can get on, the, you can Google these guys. These are the marathon monks of Mount Hiei they live, it's a thousand year old lineage and what these guys do is they do one thing. They just sit perfectly still. That's all they do. And, and so in the beginning, and I don't mean like solid, it's kind of like you sit for two hours and then you go do your yogi job and then you come and sit again. But you do 20 years of sitting perfectly still. And, and when I say perfectly still, obviously, no scratching, right? And so you have to deal with every itch that shows up and which can be very maddening, um, but no swallowing. Have you noticed when you sit on a meditation cushion that after a while, you know, you, you swallow the spit in your mouth? That, no, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do anything. If, if your foot falls asleep, well, whatever, <laughs> nothing. And, and so, so what happens is, is after years of this practice, basically, they've now think neuroplasticity now. So, so these monks have cultivated a capacity to handle every level of discomfort. Like there isn't a level of discomfort that they can't sit through. And <clears throat> so then, and there's different levels of monkdom. At, 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 at the top level, you could be asked by the, the, the Roshis if you wanted to become a marathon monk. And a marathon monk is a great honor, but it's an incredibly difficult channel, challenge. You can read about it in your study guide. Um, what a marathon monk does is in the winter, uh, um, in, in Mount Hiei, think, think like Mount Rainier, because it's, it's bloody cold. It's, it's about the same latitude as Seattle. And, and, and they run in a little, cotton, I don't want to say kimono, I don't know what it's called, but in, in, in grass shoes, they run from the monastery to a town and back, which is just about 25 miles every single day for 100 days during the winter. Now, during the first 100 days, you could decide, ah, I, I don't want to do this anymore. But 
after the first 100 days, on day 101, if you haven't said, you know what, thanks for thinking of me, but I think uh, this isn't a true expression of who I think I am. I'm going to go do something else, <laughs> right? If you haven't done that and it's 101 days, there's no saying no after that. Meaning you have the intention of taking your own life if you don't complete this. And the, when I say complete this, it's another 900 days. It's a, this is a thousand day odyssey over seven years. And so every year up until year five, you're progressing, you're running. And then year five, it's 200 days. And in the middle of year five, the whole ordeal is punctuated by the thing that is probably the most difficult thing to do of everything. They sit perfectly still for seven and a half days, 180 hours. So if you're thinking, yes, no eating, no drinking, no peeing, no pooping, no swallowing, obviously, nothing. At two in the morning, every single morning, you get up once, you go do a water offering, and, and to do the offering, you have to walk like 200 yards. The first day, the first 20, 24 hours, takes about five minutes to go there and back. By the last day, that, that in the middle of that seventh day, hours to make it there and back. How is that possible? How can a human being do that? Neuroplasticity. So, so people that show up at this Tendai Zen monastery, they're just sniveling acolytes like us. And then they do this practice, and then 20 years later, they do something that is literally superhuman. So that's the potential of practice. So there's no ceiling on how much better you can get if you push yourself a little bit. Now, if any of you are like, go overboard, don't. Don't hurt yourself. But do push into your stretch edge a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to actually begin to practice a little strong determination and we're going to use the techniques that we know so far, how to localize our attention, globalize our awareness, watch for forgetting, watch for mind wandering, uh, zooming in, zooming out. Uh, and so we're going to make the time that we're on the cushion interesting and not like, God, how much more time do I have, right? And so Shinzen tells me the story of the marathon monks, and there I am, and it like he's kind of long-winded like I am and by the time he's finished with the story I'm like when is lunch already and my knees and everything and he goes so, so he, he says to us so we're gonna sit right now for uh, perfectly still let's do it and I'm and I, and I know when lunch is it's just 15 minutes and I'm thinking 15 minutes I can handle that I got gotcha. you and then he goes for an hour and a half and then I'm like I'm gonna do this and gong and I lock it up and like Pavlov's dog, that gong goes off and my mouth is full of spit. <laughs> and, 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 and so immediately, remember I told you I was going to tell you about the panic attack? I started to have a panic attack. Uh, the voice in my head is like, holy shit, I'm going to be the first person that dies on a meditation because you're choking on my own spit. There's no way I can do this. And my voice just went crazy. And it got a lot worse inside. So now, if you're looking at me, it looks like this. <laughs> but inside, it's like a Hurricane Katrina, all right? And then after, the whole mouthful of spit thing kind of went away. I got, a, I got a hold of myself. I'm like, settle down, like do this. For a little while, it kind of settled down. Then my knees, wong, 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 wong. And now, you guys know I'm a physical therapist, right? And so, of course, what's my story? My story is like, I wonder if I'm going to give myself a stretch neuropathy of my common perineal nerve. And, and then, then my, again, on to another story, and I start worrying. And then it, it's just like craziness again. And again, from the outside, 
<laughs> it just looks like this, but I am tortured in here. And then finally, by the grace of God, gong, I just fell off my cushion. <laughs> but I will tell you, that hour and a half of sitting perfectly still changed me more than any other meditation I have ever done because I totally pushed into and, and told the voice in my head to shut up. I settled it down and afterwards I felt so proud of myself. And now, like I used to be, and I kind of still am, little Mr. Fussy Pants. And so in a way, I am fussy. I got that OCD, you know, I'm fussy. But I also, I can sit on a meditation cushion now, perfectly still, for three hours. Wow. I'm not saying it's easy, it's not easy, but I can do it. And that, I know it's not marathon monk territory, but sitting on a <laughs> meditation cushion for three hours, at least for me, that's a long time. All right, so now, this oh, image that you're seeing, that is a classic in the pantheon of Buddhist um, mythology. That's, that's the Buddha touching the ground, finding his enlightenment, and all around he's being tormented and tempted by what are called the ten armies of Mara. You can think of, you can think of uh, the, um, um, the seven deadly sins, like anything that would tempt you, lust and greed and anger and, and, and gluttony, like just all of that worldly stuff that tempts us and he just sits through it. So that's the potential on a meditation cushion this week, that's what I want you to do. I want you to decide to do skillful meditation. Buckle down and say, I can do this and set a, set a timer for 15 minutes and don't move and do your practice. And don't let the voice in your head get you to get off that cushion until you'd, you've done it. All right, so now that's, that's the old symbol of resisting temptation. Here's, here's the new symbol. <laughs> okay, now that's... <laughs> Now it doesn't have to be okay. So I, I mean, I could, I could show, I could show guy and women, right? Like, yeah. like guy resisting good-looking women. I mean, it's endless. But that's just one example of well, the stuff that we have to like. Okay, enough, and and maintain some clarity of mind, and don't let everything that we see or hear or come into contact with create so much disturbance in us. Like we can learn how to settle that. All right. So good. Now the meditation, again, is all about don't make it worse. Whatever happens, don't make it worse. What you're going to do, you're going to recall the four fundamentals. Where's the space? Got the space. Check out the object. How's my effort? What's happening now? And then, zooming. Okay? You guys ready? So what we're going to do is we're going to sit for 10 minutes right now. Okay. So let's practice st strong determination. Now I'm going to stand here and I'm going to try to be as still as I can. I want you, now if you're thinking what's the best position to sit in so I don't move, uncross your legs, sit up nice and straight and, um, and put your hands in your lap. Okay? Good. All right, so start by keeping your eyes open. And all I want you to do is look at the dot. So just look at that dot. And at the very same time you're looking at the dot, become aware of what you can see to the right and the left, up and down, even the space between your nose and that dot. See the whole space. Notice the space. Okay, notice the object is visual right now. There's a subject, there's an object, notice that. How's your effort right now? Not, not even a flinch, don't, don't give in to the slightest impulse. What's happening now? Open your ears, hear everything. The sounds of the road, 
my voice. Good. Again, notice the space, the object. How's your effort? If you've moved, set a really strong conscious intention not to move again. Okay, good. Now close your eyes. Now see the space of your mind immediately. It's black behind black. Notice there are no edges. See if you can like this. If, if there's any worry or fear because you're, you're doing something that seems slightly challenging, notice it. It's a feeling. Let it be there. Don't hate it. It's not you. Now, what I want you to do is follow the breath. Just follow the breath at the tip of your nose. That's the object coming and going. Notice if there's any sort of an impulse, and it might be a voice of distraction, might, might be a voice that's discouraging. Tell yourself, that's not me, just a voice. Just say talk and get back to following the breath. You know, replace that voice. Be conscious. Say, I can do this. No problem. I got this. Don't move at all. No motion whatsoever. See if you can notice the impulse before any movement. And see if you can just be with the impulse. Take that as the object and ask yourself, what is this? But don't answer. It's just energy, just information. I want you to move your head. If you move, you won't, you'll miss the thing that's pushing you. Don't relieve anything. Just sit. You don't have to love the sensations, but here's the game. Don't hate them. Just let them be there like, like a house guest that stayed too long. You, you, you continue to be polite, but you don't have to give that house guest all your attention. Okay, so now, pick, pick the light show behind your closed eyes, the light and dark shapes that you can see coming and going. Zoom into that. Really pick a very small part of that visual screen and zoom right in. I want you to zoom in to the size of a grain of sand. See if you can see the flicker of light-like activity behind your closed eyes. That zooming. Pick breath at the tip of your nose now. Try to find the breath. Zoom in, the size of a penny. Now even more, the size of a grain of sand. Notice when you get so close, you don't even know what the breath is at that point. Notice the space. Notice the whole space. The object is that grain of sand, that, that sensation. How's your effort? Boost your energy. We're almost done. Like, like do this. Boost your energy. What's happening now?
Now work it yourself. You don't need me to guide. Work it yourself. Strongly determine that you can do this. If you've moved or are moving, set a conscious intention. Like, what is this that's making me move? See if I can learn something. You're changing yourself by watching yourself. Tell yourself, it's going to be okay. I'm just sitting here. I'm, everything's good. It's all good. What's going on with the space? You watching an object? Go right back to the breath. If you've lost that object, if your mind is wandering, go back. Check your effort. What's happening now? Okay, open your eyes. All right. How'd you guys do? Some of you looked solid, and some of you looked like, wow, I'm, this is making me crazy. <laughs> okay. All right.